Let's take a closer look at Alpine, Renault and their motorsport programs and their constant engine problems. Renault joined F1 at the end of the 1970s and created a fully French works team based in Viry Châtillon, Paris. They produced chassis and engines there. First, they only supplied their own works team. In 1983, they started to supply other F1 teams with engines. Renault pulled out of F1 in 1986 and rejoined as engine manufacturer in 1989. After winning world championships in the 1990s, they pulled out again in 1997 and they made a deal with the French technology company Mechachrome to service and prepare the engines for the F1 teams which still used them in the following years. But the engines were not very successful and they lost all of their customer teams. Now Renault decided to rejoin F1 in 2002 and they bought the Benetton team in Enstone, UK. So the Renault Works team builds the chassis in Enstone, engine design stays in Viry in France. And Mechachrome in France assembled, prepared and serviced the engines for Renault. They didn't have customer teams until 2007 when they signed a deal with Red Bull. With this partnership they could win world championships again and because of their success they delivered four F1 teams with engines in 2013. In 2014 the big engine regulation change came and Formula 1 changed from naturally aspirated V8s to V6 turbo engines. Still enjoying the success, Renault started much too late with the development for the new V6 drivetrain and in the end they came up with a conservative design which was not just lacking power but also reliability. The relationship to their best customer with work status, Red Bull, got worse and worse and in the end they parted ways. But not just that, because Renault couldn't catch up, was still lacking reliability and the Renault engine always needed more cooling than others, which is compromising aerodynamics, they lost all of their customer teams again. And again, Renault stepped in, bought the F1 team in Enstone again and started as a full works team. Again, chassis development in Enstone, engine development in Viry. And they only supplied themselves after Red Bull moved to Honda. In the last years of their partnership, Red Bull didn't even call the engine a Renault engine anymore, they called it TAG. So although new joiner Honda could catch up with the rest, Renault never managed to do that. The works team failed to reach their own targets and in the end they even renamed the whole team to Alpine and painted the cars blue instead of yellow. So it was a new start for the image of the brand. Red Bull started a discussion about an engine freeze until the new powertrain regulations come into force in 2026 so they can build up their own engine department originally because their engine partner Honda wanted to pull out of Formula 1. So this engine freeze was coming in 2022, that means performance upgrades are not allowed anymore, but upgrades to fix reliability are still possible. Of course, all engine manufacturers brought aggressive performance upgrades before the freeze started, which made their engines less reliable. And in 2022, they brought reliability upgrades. All engine manufacturers did that except Renault now called Alpine. So they now ended up with an F1 engine which has around 20 horsepower less than everybody else. And since we are in an engine freeze, they cannot catch up anymore. Alpine then approached the FIA and asked for a special permission to upgrade their engines to catch up, but that deal didn't materialize. It's also quite an embarrassment as a long time manufacturer to admit that you are down on power and now want to upgrade while everybody else can't. So no one wants that Alpine engine from Viry and now it seems like not even Alpine themselves want it anymore. The Renault company was always about saving money and not spending the same amounts as the competition. CEO Luca De Meo says he was never against investments but they have to come up with good ideas. So if they don't bring him ideas he likes, they don't get investment. The idea is now that if their Viri engine department only produces engines which are the weakest in the fields for the last 10 years, they can also just close Viri and buy a better engine from another team. That way, they would save all the money for their engine department, test benches and equipment, and they would get a better engine quickly. But it would also mean a huge embarrassment that the F1 works team resigns and becomes a customer team because they haven't been able to produce a proper engine. At the same time, the new hypercar regulations allowed manufacturers to join for very little money compared to LMP1 times. There are LMH hypercars where manufacturers can design everything themselves and there are LMDH hypercars. 
their price is kept at 1 million euro and you just need to put an engine inside and your own bodywork around it. BOP will then make sure that everyone is competitive and you can race in the WEC championship and also in America. So also Renault Alpine took that offer, decided for the cheaper LMDH hypercar and put a well-known engine inside. The 3.4 liter V6 Formula 2 engine of their longtime partner Megachrome. In its turbo version, the engine delivers pretty exactly what they need. The only problem is that F2 races barely take two hours. Megachrome modified this engine for endurance racing and it could survive the earlier six hour races of the season. But unfortunately in Le Mans, both cars retired with engine failure even before six hours were over. And after the race, team members said that they knew reliability could be an issue. So how do you fix something like this? We talk about a 3.4 liter V6 turbo engine with 700 horsepower. Because the capacity isn't a lot, it needs lots of boost. Porsche in comparison has a 4.6 liter V8 turbo for the same power. And reducing power is not really an option, otherwise they have the same issue as in F1. So Renault Alpine had successful times in the past, but currently the impressions they give to the outside world are not ideal. Unfortunately, in the two biggest motorsport categories, they have significant engine issues. So what do you think? How should they fix both situations? And will they be able to find back to success? Let me know in the comments below and see you at the next video.